So you want to be a backend developer. Well, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know to go from zero to full-time backend developer in three to six months. And along the way, I'm going to share the three biggest mistakes beginners make during their backend development journey. So watch out for those. Thanks to Frontag for sponsoring a part of this video. Before I tell you the exact roadmap to become a backend developer, I need to tell you where backend development fits in the overall software engineering journey. In any product, there's a stack, which just means the list of technologies from top to bottom that you need to create that product. We have the front end, a middle message passing API layer, the back end, and a database. In plain terms, the front end is what you as a user sees. The API layer is how the front end and the back end communicate with each other. The back end is what processes and computes everything we show on the front end and the database is where we store any information we need to make the application work. It might be easier to understand all of this with an example. Let's say we're trying to build the YouTube homepage. Well, the front end is what you see when you go on the homepage, the thumbnails, the titles, the view counts, and then all the other tabs like Explorer, Shorts, and Subscriptions. But to load all this, the front end has to hit up the back end through the API layer and say, hey, can you send me a list of the videos I should show on this person's homepage? And if you're logged in, this list needs to be personalized. So the back end then hits up the database where all the information about you is stored. What videos you've watched in the past, how long you've watched them, what videos you've liked or disliked, all that information, the back end through some algorithm computes the final list of videos we should show you, sends that back up through that same API interface to the front end, the front end displays it in a beautiful user-friendly way, and then you go on your journey watching your favorite YouTube videos. As a backend developer, you have to understand everything I've told you except for the front end. You don't care how we show the information. Is it pretty? What colors do we use? Is it centered? Is it on the left side or the right side? You just care that you're sending the front end all the correct information. And so you can think of the back end as powering an entire application. It's often where some of the most interesting and complex problems live. To do this successfully, you have to understand the API layer, the backend, and the database. And don't worry, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know to learn, practice, and improve in these skills. Let's start top down with the API layer. An API, or application programming interface, is simply a contract between two parties, the front end and the back end, essentially outlining what things the front end can ask of the back end and what things the back end can provide to the front end. And the place where all this message passing of information happens is called an endpoint, and it simply lives somewhere on the server. It's a place the front end knows where to ask information, and it's the exact same place the back end knows where to provide that information. There are two popular technologies when it comes to the API, REST and GraphQL. Since REST has been around for a longer time and is, I think, more intuitive to understand, I'd recommend you start there. There are really only four operations you need to know with REST. Get, post, put, and delete. Let's walk through an example. Let's say we're creating an account for a user. Well, the get request might be the user types in their email address and the front end hits the back end and says, hey, does an account for this user already exist? Can we get that account? And the back end says yes or no. A post request would be the back end has basically said, nope, this is a unique email. We've never seen this before. So the front end says, all right, then let's go ahead and create that account. So post is you creating something on the back end in the database. Put is whenever you want to update something. So for example, the person might want to change their username. So the front end might make a put request to the back end with a different username, and then we'll change it in the system. And delete is pretty self-explanatory. Let's say the person wants to delete their account from our system. The front end would make a delete request with that account ID and the back end would go ahead and delete it. I know it sounds like a lot, and if you think you've understood everything, then you're making the first big mistake that beginners make, which is they try to understand theory, not application. There is so much more out there about REST that you don't know and I simply haven't explained. And the best way to learn it is by doing, by practicing, by playing around with public endpoints or writing your own and seeing what happens. A great tool that can help you understand REST is called Postman, a completely free application that allows you to design, edit, and iterate over your own APIs. And best of all, you don't need a front end, so you don't have to wait to build your own front end React app just to test if some endpoint is returning hello world. You can go to Postman, hit that endpoint, and see what the response gives you. And we'll use Postman to test our own backend server eventually. But for now, since we haven't actually set up anything in the backend, you should go ahead and play around with some public APIs. There are plenty of examples in the Postman docs, and I'll walk through some of them over here. Act like a detective, throw random things in the endpoint, 
use different request parameters, ask for different things, try to change different things and see how the server responds. Read the error codes. 200 means all's good. 404 means not found. You can find a full list of HTTP error requests on the Mozilla Developer Network page. And it all comes full circle because if you've ever tried to access some part of a website that doesn't exist, you usually get a broken page or link or a 404 not found. And 404 is the same HTTP code we just went over. Pretty cool, right? Now that you've played around with some public endpoints, it's time to create your own backend server and write your own endpoints. And then we can use Postman to test everything. But to write our own backend server, we first have to pick a programming language and a framework. And if you followed along on my channel, you know exactly what I'm gonna recommend. Either Python or JavaScript are great options to get started with backend development. They're easy to learn, they have great frameworks and a robust community to support you. So if you ever query something on Stack Overflow because you're stuck or have a bug, there are gonna be thousands of responses to help you instantly. And many of you ask me what a framework is and why we should use them. Why not just write plain Python or vanilla JavaScript? Well, a framework just makes your life easier. It's a full-fledged ecosystem that takes care of a lot of those use cases that everyone needs like a testing framework, a way to connect to the database, maybe even authentication and user management, stuff that you don't wanna worry about or is just so hard that someone's already figured out. You should spend time working on the stuff that actually matters, all the cool stuff you're building in your application. Rather than Googling how to set up the DB and model layer or how to set up a testing suite, a lot of this stuff will come for free in that framework and you can just use it out of the box. One of the hardest things to build and maintain is account creation and user management. And this is also the thing that all apps need. I mean, think about the last time you went to a website and didn't have to log in. Well, this is where front end comes in. They have a bunch of plug and play solutions which allow you to leverage your own user management system in minutes. And best of all, everything is customizable. You wanna support a simple login box? Check. How about single sign-on and multiple factor authentication? Also check and social login, passwordless login, and advanced security methods, check, check, and check. From a login box UI and admin portal, you can allow your users to create new accounts on your app and have an internal system for you to monitor user management in your system. So if a user hits you up for support with any account related requests, you can easily help them out. And truly developer first, front egg is language and framework agnostic. So you can use it with any technology on the front end and the back end. Their documentation is also amazing, and they have example code snippets for many popular languages, from Node and Ruby to Python. And finally, when you work with user data, you have to be very careful with privacy and compliance. If you're in Europe, you might be familiar with the stringent GDPR policies. Why worry about all that? The experts at FrontEgg have you covered. Use their simple APIs and focus on the rest of your app, the stuff that actually matters. Try out FrontEgg today for free at FrontEgg.com. Now, let's continue talking about backend frameworks. For Python, I'd highly recommend either Django or Flask, and for JavaScript, you can't go wrong with Node or Express. But if you want my personal opinion, you need to pick one to get started, go with JavaScript, pick Node and Express. And if you want more reasons why, check out my best programming language to learn in 2022, where I pit Python versus JavaScript in detail, and well, one of them wins. The great thing with Node and Express is that you can get started in under five minutes. You simply create a new folder, download NPM, NPM init, download Express, and you're good to go. Now that we've covered all of that, instead of me teaching you how to write backend code and interface with APIs and make database queries, I'm gonna point you to some of my favorite resources that can explain all these concepts far better than I can. If you watch my fastest way to learn coding and actually get a job video, then you must be familiar with Dr. Angela Chu. Well, today's recommendation is another one of her courses titled The Complete 2022 Web Development Bootcamp. I put a link in the description below, so check it out if you're interested. A couple things to note here. The course is titled The Complete Web Development Bootcamp, which means it's gonna teach you the entire stack of things from the front end, the middle passing, and the back end. It'll make you a full stack engineer, and there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I think it's a superpower to be a generalist, to understand how everything fits together. But if you're watching this video, chances are you're more interested in the back end side of things. So what I would do is skip to the back end section, do all those modules, and then if you're ever interested in learning the front end, you can always come back because if you own the course, you'll have it for life. But this is also the second major mistake most beginners make when learning back end development. They learn verbatim. 
they go through the modules and learn the concepts as they specifically tie to the examples presented in the course. But once you take them away from the course and tell them to do anything else, they're lost. The goal by the end of the course in this video is to go and create your own backend application from scratch. And the only way to do this is by not memorizing examples. It's by taking a step back and really understanding the concepts mentioned in the course. Essentially, use the course as a guide, not as a crutch. The goal is to become independent. And it goes without saying, the course might be 70 hours long, but it's gonna take you far longer to truly become confident. But that's okay, we have three to six months. Remember, learning doesn't happen overnight. Last but not least, let's talk about the database layer. There are two main technologies that come to mind, relational databases and non-relational databases. In industry, we use relational databases far more often, and some popular examples are MySQL and Postgres, but usually for beginners, non-relational databases are easier to understand since they're essentially hash maps, just key value pairs. Bottom line, both types of databases are important if you want to become a backend developer in industry, so I'd recommend spending a little bit of time with each. Lucky for you, Angela's course that I recommend covers both in in-depth detail. Now you should have all the tools you need to become a world-class backend developer. You know how to interface with APIs, you know how to write backend code, and you know everything there is to know about the database. Any front-end developer or company would be lucky to have you as their partner in crime in full-stack development. Take a moment to see how far you've come, but even cooler, see how customizable the backend is. You should be able to easily switch out REST for GraphQL or your Node Express server for a Django or Flask one or your Postgres database for a MongoDB one. It's really plug and play. Now all that's left is getting a job and you might think you need to memorize everything I've just told you to pass the interviews, but that's actually the third and final mistake that beginners make when learning backend development. They interview prep incorrectly. They think by the end of the interview, they have to have a full-fledged Node Express server with a Postgres connection, but that's simply not true. In fact, you'll soon realize that interviews are generally the same no matter what software engineering role you're applying for. They revolve around data structures and algorithms. So go watch my fastest way to learn coding and actually get a job or how I'd learn coding if I could start over videos where I cover interview prep in detail. Just skip to the final few sections and you should be good to go. In summary, brush up on data structures and algorithms and then spend plenty of time practicing questions on new code. Start with a couple easy, spend most of your time on mediums and then tackle a couple hard. For entry-level backend software engineering jobs, that's all you need. But if you're looking to make a switch or you have a couple years of experience, you're also gonna go through system design interviews, which are basically testing you on how to architect full-fledged systems. Remember the YouTube homepage example from before? Well, the interviewer might actually ask you that or to design Twitter or Facebook or WhatsApp or whatever. They wanna see you think through API schemas and database design and architect an entire backend system. I'll create a more detailed guide on system design prep in a future video, but there are so many free tutorials and blogs out there, so go check them out. And like everything else, the best way to get better is just by doing, by thinking in the real world. What are some of your favorite apps? What websites do you spend time on? How were they created? If you were an engineer on that company, what would you do differently? Now you know everything it takes to become a full-fledged backend developer in three to six months. I can't say the journey will be easy, but I can promise it will be fulfilling. And if you've got this far, then you might be shocked at how far you've come. I'm proud of you. Congratulations. That's all I have. Till next time. Cheers.